I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. I love this line from our first reading today from the prophet Amos. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from the following the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. Who is he saying this to, to the way? Who is he saying this to, by the way? It's Amaziah, a priest of Bethel, so in the, in the southern region of Israel. And just like all through the Old, Old Testament, we know there's these splits, and there's the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The 12 tribes have been split apart. And yet the Lord has chosen Amos to go down and to, to preach. To preach what? To preach repentance to try to help them to come back into union with, together. Amaziah is like, Amos, we're sick of hearing you. Get out of here. Don't say this anymore. Maybe there's people in your life they do that to you as well, right? Stop bringing up religion. We're sick of hearing about it. What's more important than religion? What's more important than God? So Amos responds to Amaziah. Hey, I don't want to be here either, by the way. I'm paraphrasing, right? Saying, I don't want to be here. I want to go. I was a shepherd. I dressed sycamores, right? Like, I was low on the totem pole. But the Lord chose me to be a prophet. And this is my mission. And I'm not going to turn away from the Lord. I'm going to preach, and I'm going to preach the truth. Now, we love to say, you know, it's that, that, that Disney ending, and they all came back together again. It was perfect never. No, that's not what happened. But there was conversion, and there was change. Not all, but he did his role. He did his role because he was called by the Lord. We fast forward today to our, our gospel, and we have now Jesus calling the twelve and sending them out on, on mission. We hear this word today in our, in our gospel, and it's, it's nice, Jesus summoned the twelve, but I like the different interpretation, Jesus called the twelve. That reminds us, right, and I think it's John 15, verse or 16, going to get right there, yep, you did not chose me but I chose you. You did not choose me. Just like Amos, right? But I chose you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, just like the 12. But guess what? The Lord also chooses you. The Lord also calls you. We hear about that today in our, our second reading from Ephesians. In him... We were also chosen, not just Paul, not just the Ephesians, but all of us. Through Christ, we too are chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one. And what is our purpose? Our purpose is to glorify the Lord, and our purpose is well so that other people know about the Lord, about the pearl of great price. Being like Andrew going to Peter, I have seen the Lord. Come, see the Lord. Inviting people to see the Lord, inviting people into this beauty of our religion, of our faith, our faith which gives us great peace. And how do we do this? Let's go back to the gospel. Jesus calls the 12. He gives them authority, and he sends them out two by two. Quick side note here. It's always good to have someone that you can talk about the faith with, right? If you have a spiritual friend, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's a sibling, someone who you can talk about how your faith life is going, that'd be a good thing. I encourage it. So you're not alone Back to the gospel. They're sent out two by two, not to take anything with them except for a walking stick 
except for a pair of sandals, but, but not two tunics, right? All this stuff. And what is this showing? That God is going to provide for them all that they need. They don't have to worry about their own resources. They don't have to worry about their own abilities. God is going to take care of them. And so he sends them out. And they go to the different towns of Israel. And they're going into households. And it says they're preaching. But what are they preaching? They're preaching repentance. What? That doesn't make sense. Preaching repentance? I don't know about you, but someone came into my house and said, hey, turn away from your ways, you're a sinner. I'd kick them out, right? I know that's what I would do. So what does it mean then to, to preach repentance? What does this actually mean? Let's go back to some of the Greek words here. And once again, you know I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a language scholar. Uh, you can look at my college grades being failed out of Latin and Spanish. Uh, this is not my, my, my gift. Uh, but, but menonia, that's what it means for this, this noun for repentance. So what does that mean? It literally means to change your mind, like to change your way of thinking to turn away from sin and turn to God. So how did the apostles do this when they went out? Well, they could could go to these, these households, they could go to these towns, and this is what they did. They said, hey, we have seen the Lord. Let me show you what we've seen, by the way, and they tell them. He he quieted the storm. He he cured people of demonic diseases. He cured the woman with hemorrhages. He raised the little girl from the dead. This is who the Lord is. Come and believe. Change your mind. This truly is the Messiah. This is what it means to have this kind of preaching of of repentance. It's going to go back to to the Greek word, and probably the Greek, maybe Latin, but I think it's Greek, right? Kerygma. Kerygma means to, to preach not just to teach. Pope Francis talks about this in his apostolic exhortation called the joy of the gospel. That part of evangelization is not only teaching about the faith, but preaching about the faith. Telling the good news and encouraging people to change their mind, to to change their, 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 their heart maybe, this radical transformation so that they may experience the peace that we're all longing for. You know, I know often we we hear that statement that a pitcher can speak 10,000 words. I want to draw your attention to St. John the Baptist preaching. Now, you maybe think that's the fourth one. No, this is true. St. John the Baptist is preaching. But I think there's actually a better example of his preaching in one of the windows. And little little inside church, you know, world here, it's my favorite window. It's number seven. Number seven is St. John the Baptist preaching to Herod. I love this window. I call it John the Baptist telling Herod, the Lord or the world? And how does he do this? We know that Herod loves to hear John the Baptist preach. He's intrigued by him, all of his dissertations. And what does John the Baptist preach when we hear in the gospel? Repent and believe in the gospel. But for Herod, what he is telling him, we know from scriptures, is what? You are in sin. Your wife that you have, Herodias, is not truly your wife. You have left the religion. Come back to the Lord. Come back and to be one with the Lord. And he's inviting him. And we can imagine, right? John the Baptist doesn't want to be there. He knows it's probably going to happen to him. But this is what the Lord has called him to do. So we have that part of the window. And then we have Herodias. If you look closely at Herodias, as Herod is looking at John the Baptist, what is Herodias doing? Her hand is gripped tightly on Herod's shoulder. Don't do it. Stay in this worldly pleasure. Stay in this earthly kingdom. This is where you want to be. It's literally good 
and evil. My brothers and sisters, what's clinging onto your shoulder right now? We all have it. We all have sins. But so often we're afraid to let them go and to truly trust in the Lord. But praise God, there's been people in our life that have preached repentance, have preached the good news, have told you about the pearl of great price. And that's why you're here this morning. You're here because you know that Jesus is here. You know if you want to believe that Jesus truly is present in the Eucharist. You know that when you come to Mass and you pray, you experience peace. Who did that for you in your life? Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was a grandparent. Maybe it was a teacher. Maybe it was a priest, a neighbor, or just someone that you saw that really inspired you. You thought, I want to be like them because they have something that I'm longing for. And they were preaching what? Turning away from the world and experiencing true freedom. It's that famous quote we often attribute to St. Francis Assisi. I think it was actually St. Ignatius instead. It doesn't matter, but it says what? Preach always when necessary. Use words. And this preaching, by the way, is not just meant for the prophets. It's not just meant for the apostles. It's not just meant for the ordained. It is meant for all of us. Why? Because God has called all of us. And that we are called to go out into the world proclaiming this message of repentance, this message of peace. You may be saying to yourself, Father, that sounds great, but I can't do it. I'm not equipped for it. And my response to that is baloney. That's my response. Amos, right? He was a shepherd. He was a dresser of sycamores. We have the apostles. Who were they? They were fishermen. There was a tax collector, a public sinner. Look at Moses. Moses, who's so afraid, and Aaron. But God equips them. He will provide. I know for myself, I I definitely struggled with that. Lord, I can't be a priest. I flunked out of Latin. Lord, I can't be a priest. I got kicked out of St. Thomas twice because of my grades. It's true. Lord, if you want me to be a priest, you have to get me back in the seminary. He opened up those doors. He's going to provide. Forever you're called to preach to. Maybe it's as a priest. Maybe it's an ordained person. But we all have people in our own life that the Lord wants us to go to and preach this message of repentance so that they may experience the freedom that we are experiencing. If you have any part of of doubt there, or there's any part of fear, remember last week's gospel, and actually our second reading. In our weakness, we are made strong. God will provide He calls us. And so when we leave today, we're going to go out into the world, a world that, who after, well not even after, after our whole life, needs God and needs peace, needs hope, needs to have some trust. We can go out into the world and say, here is the pearl of great price. And not to take that light and hide it under a bushel basket, but instead to let it shine in you. You who God created and has given you this mission, not only to experience his love, but to spread it near and far.